Good morning, and welcome back to this series of tutorials on SimTalk. In today's video, we are going to learn how to review our methods using two very useful tools for any programmer, the debugger and the breakpoints. Let's start then with the first one, the debugger. The name debugger comes from bug, which in computing refers to any error that occurs in our code consistently over time. The term became popular in the late 1940s when one of the first electromechanical computers began to fail due to a moth getting trapped in a relay. Thus, debugging would refer to eliminating all bugs or errors in our code, and the debugger is the tool that makes this task easier for us. Let's see how this tool works. To use the debugger, we will first need to execute a method, since its function is to display real-time information on the execution status and take manual actions. As we saw in the previous video, plant simulation does not allow two methods to be executed at the same time, so the debugger will always show us information about the method that is being executed at a given moment. To understand all this, we will use the example from the previous video, where we have two methods that call each other and print to the console. To execute the main method using the debugger, we have two ways. We can select it and in the general toolbar click on Method, Tools, Debug or by just selecting the method and pressing on F11. By doing either of the two options, the debugger will instantly open, which is this independent window here. The first thing we see is an exact copy of our method with a yellow line that tells us what is the next command that plant simulation will execute. At the top, we have a ribbon with different tools that we have already seen before, such as opening the location of the running method or opening its class, but also with new options. For now, we are going to focus on the five main buttons that allow us to control the execution of our method. The first of these options is Step Over, which we can also use by pressing F10 and allows us to execute the next line of code. If we do so, we will see that the yellow line has jumped to the next command that can be executed, ignoring the comments, and the first message has appeared in the console. The next option is the Step Into, or F11, which has a subtle difference from the previous one. If we press it, we will see that there is no difference with step over. It has printed the following message in the console and has jumped to the next line. But let's see what happens with the next command, which is the one that calls method 1. If we do F10 or step over, it runs that method in the background and goes to the next command. How would this have changed using step into? Let's go back by right-clicking on the previous line and selecting set next statement. This function allows us to manually skip the order in which the commands are written and go directly to a line of code, whether it is before or after the current line, without executing the rest of the code. Now, if instead of step over or F10 we do step into, we see how the debugger starts executing the method 1 and waits for the first command. So the only difference between step over and step into is how they resolve the call to other methods. At this point, I'm going to stop to explain what information we have at the bottom of the debugger. This set of tabs is known as the watch window and offers very useful information and tools to understand how our method works, to such an extent that we can have two copies open at the same time if we click on the fourth button or with the F12 button. The first two tabs give us information about the variables that we are using, which we will see in the next video. In the call stack tab, however, it tells us what the current call chain is. This is read in descending order, so it would be indicating that the method 1 has been executed from the method. Furthermore, if we double-click on the calling method, the debugger will indicate in green in which line it has stopped its execution. If we want to return to the running method, we can double-click on it or press the third option on the tool ribbon. Next, we have the call chains tab, which will show us if there are other call chains prepared to execute after the action, and the suspended tab, where we will see methods suspended for a certain time. We will see the latter and the expressions tab in future videos. The next button that the debugger offers us is the step out or shift plus F11. With this button we would execute the rest of the current method until the end and we would stop at the one immediately above, in our case the method. In contrast, the last button in the block is the continue or F5 button, which will execute the entire call chain to the end, not just the current method. To see it better, let's do a step into to the method 1 and then press F5. As we see, now it no longer stops at the calling method but rather finishes the entire execution. Finally, we will see the terminate simulation button or control plus T. 
This option completely stops the execution of both the method and the current simulation without continuing to execute the current method or the rest of the active waiting methods. If we press it now, it shows us a warning. And after accepting, it stops everything without printing any of the prints through the console. However, when we have very long call chains with many lines of code in each method and methods that can be executed from different points, it is usually not practical to manually start the debugger from the first method and navigate with step over and step into until getting to the point we want to analyze. For these cases, plant simulation offers us the breakpoints. These can be added to any line of our code as long as it is not a comment and trigger the debugger when the method execution reaches that line. If we go to the method tab, tools subtab of the general toolbar, we will see that we can define two types of breakpoints class breakpoints and instance breakpoints. The difference between the two lies in the difference between class and instance, which we have already explained in my other video series on standard plant simulation. But to understand it well, let's look at it with an example. Let's define a class method that we will call the parent method. Inside this method, we will print the sentence executing the parent method. If we save the changes and run with F5, we will see how it prints the message through the console. Now we are going to instantiate this method and call it from the different methods that we have from the previous video. Therefore, if we open the inheritance of the parent method, we should see something like this. If we clear the console and run the method, we will see that our parent method is called three times, one for the method and one for each time we execute method one. Now we open the last instance that we have inserted and we are going to define an instance breakpoint. To do this, we can select instance breakpoint in method tools, right click on the line and select instance breakpoint or press shift plus F9. If we now clean the console and run the method again, the debugger will appear right on the line where we have set the breakpoint, but not in the previous call that we have defined in the other instance. Now we finish the simulation, clean the console, and we are going to change the instance breakpoint for a class breakpoint. If we now run it again, the debugger will appear for both instances, even though we have only set the breakpoint in one. To see it, we can click Continue and we will see how it stops again. This occurs because the class breakpoint applies to the entire class inheritance, regardless of where we created it. Therefore, depending on what interests us, we will have to use one type of breakpoint or another. We can also create and delete them in the debugger itself from the tool ribbon with the right button or using keyboard shortcuts. Additionally, if we want to run the method up to a certain point in the code, from the debugger we can right-click on that line and select Run to Cursor, which behind the scenes creates an instance breakpoint and automatically deletes it as soon as it is activated. In the Debugger tab of the General Toolbar, we have the Manage Breakpoints option. If we open it, it will show us a list of all the breakpoints that we have in our model. From here, we can open them by double-clicking, delete them using the delete key, or deactivate them by checking this checkbox. This will not remove them, but plant simulation will ignore them during execution. With this, we have reviewed how the debugger works, the essential tool that will help us throughout this series of videos to understand how our methods work. In the next video, we will use the debugger to go more in-depth into programming in SimTalk, talking about the use of variables and what working with them gives us. Greetings and until the next video.